Can yeah. you show me the way to the guard's depot? Where? The guard's depot. Oh, it's just up the road the other side, next door to the asylum. Oh, very convenient. Thank you. My first day back at school all over again. I'm sure you'll find lots of other nice boys to play with. They'll probably bully me. I'll speak to the headmaster. And refuse to pay the fees? Yes. Now run along. Goodbye, you stupid child. I do love you so much. Goodbye, darling. Take care of yourself. See the master tailor, neck, middle, shoulders. Yes, sir. Get all your civvies back to label your suitcase for home. Air cut, too. Yes, sir. You and the first guards? I'm sorry? You're a grenadier? No, Welsh guards. Oh, foreign legion, eh? Get dressed, you. Tailor for you, too. Collar, sleeves, and an air cut. Will the tailor be doing that as well? Oh, a comic, eh? Now, I'll see the barber myself about you. And anyway, why aren't you in the mix? Well, being a good Irishman, I was going to join the regiment. But the little gambine man behind the counter was so sure, without even asking me, that I said I would not, just to see him make out a new enlistment. Stop point. talking! Yes, Sergeant. So you've joined the Front Legion as well? I'm in the Welsh Guards. Same thing. Taylor, whole runny jacket. It's truth. What a squad. Train soldier! Line Take him out the stitch, then show the clopper. Line now pay attention to me, everybody. Not the army now, you're the brigade of guards. And you're in my squad. Cripes, what a squad. Now listen to me, you honorable little men. You do as you're told and work with a the will, then help me all you can by doing what I said. And the Lord will prosper the work of your hands. But work against me, do me down, or play me up. I'll make your life a walk in hell. I'll have you paid for death by torture, or roasted over an hundred dollars. Now fall in our time. Do I look as ridiculous as you do? Worse, far worse. Now, how would you like this? Just a little trim? Yes, I think and so. Just a little bit off the top? No, not too much, no. And uh, cleaned up the back? Join the army and see the world. <laughs> Join the guards and scrub it. Sure as the button on my trap in future. <laughs> I always did talk too much. Practically took the skin off you. Right, pay attention! Any of you people ever had any experience concert parties? Playing the piano, fiddle, harp, saying recitations, tap dancing, anything else? I play the piano. Oh, I suppose I could sing. Right, get over the laughing straight away, get it scrubbed out for Insta concert tonight. Come on! And you! Let that be a warning to the rest of you. Never volunteer for anything in the army, except certain death. Now, that's a good idea, those shoes. It's too hot in here, I'm going out for a smoke. Anyone care to join me in a constitutional? Hmm? Oh. Hey, 
you? What do you think you're doing? Are you speaking to me? Stand up when you speak to the regimental saw I made you honorable man. Sorry. Say, sir, when you speak to me. Sorry, sir. You may think you can walk about dressed as you like, but you don't. Give me a collar up. What's your name? Morgan, sir. It was, but you've lost it. Put them in the boat, Bill Tom Gray. Sir. Never seen anything like it in my life. Sir. Please, sir, Morgan. Done. Now, remember, before you say anything, say, I thank you, sir, for leave to speak. Do you understand? Sir. Blake St. Morgan. Hey, barge! Left, right, left, right, left, right, mark time! Left, right, hard! Right, down! Next! Come on, Charlie. Sandine. Ah! Hard move over to the left and fire! St. Peter walking in the water couldn't slow much worse than you. Ah, oh, yeah! yeah. Hard will advance. Left! Hard! Yeah, I'd like to join the squad, Sergeant, please. Pull in the rear rank. extra drills. Now pay attention, you honourable men, one and all. Now tomorrow, there's a colonial secretary gentleman and an important geezer coming down to have a look at you. To talk to any of you colonials friendly like. That's not what I'd do with any of you. Anyway, any guardsmen who's English, two paces forward. Any colonials, two paces step back. March! Are you deaf? No, Sergeant. Then what are you? I'm an American sergeant. This world is divided into two parts. England and the colonies. You're not English? Right, then two paces, step back, march! You may think you feel wheel when you're cycling, but you don't! What's your name? Hamilton, sir. It was? Put him in the book, copy, Tom Major. Ha! I know when cycling. Ha! Never seen anything like it in all my life! <laughs> RSM told me. You're doing well, you are, after only one month or two. Well? If he told you to show haircut, it means you couldn't run here on anything else, and what's more, he knows it. You're learning quick. Mm, sure, we Irish hang together, Sergeant. Yeah, they could hang a few more of you without me complaining. You three wait till you get your inspection tomorrow. Call you one half stopper. Core. Core and I aren't half browned off. Me too. Four weeks we've had here, though. It all seems so unnecessary, if you ask me. Where does it get them when they've finished? Outside Buckingham Palace, I suppose. Other soldiers are just as good without all this discipline and what have you. Shh, that's heresy. Mm. No, it's the lack of privacy I hate most in trying to be a soldier. Me too, but I don't ask much these days. It's funny how all your wants and ambitions seem to shrink. All I ask is that I should avoid the RSM. And this great past inspection. And that nobody treads on my toe cap and spoils it. A simple taste. Mm. Now take all that off again and let's go over to the naffy. Oh, do you think we need caps? It isn't far, it's dark anyway. No, come on, John. Hey, yo! Where are your caps? Stand still! Never seen anything like it in all my life! Did they pass their fourth week inspection this morning, Sergeant Dean? Yes, sir. Right, we'll take a walk out tonight. Sir! You too. Am I hurting you by any chance? Am I hurting you? You're not hurting me, sir. I should be, because I'm standing on your back hair. Game cut! Both of you!
Do you see that? Soldiers, I ask you. I've never seen anything like it in all my life. Now that's off coming the other side of the road. Up. Two, three, four, five, damn. Ah, smashing. <laughs> What's it matter? It's only a game, really. That's the trouble with you, British. Even in this war, you don't give a damn who wins just so you get a game. Nonsense. I'm mad to win. Look at the way I'm cheating now. I wish to heavens you play fair, then. We might do a little better. Crafty, you young oaf. You mashed up the best hand of the evening a moment ago. Your breath was whistling so loudly through all that hair, it put me right off. And the last three are good. We're just in, young fellow, my lad. Say thank you. Let's do with it. Uh, his lordship's, I think. And what convention are you going to play this time? Not that I'm curious, of course, just desperate. A modified half Nelson. I'll lose in a minute. Nothing ever happens, don't put it on. Thanks for the coming in every minute. minute. The latest facts of the situation are these. Messages from Tokyo say that Japan has announced a formal declaration of war against both the United States What's and that? Britain. Shh. The Japanese air raids were made on the Hawaiian Islands and the Philippines. Observers' reports say that an American battleship has been hit and that a number of the Japanese bombers have been shot down. So nothing American ever happens, eh? American progress off Honolulu, and American transport with a timber on board. Well, here's my billet. Good night, Chandler. Sleep well. Oh, David. Yes? I just wanted to say that, well, I'm very sorry that America's got mixed up in the war. It's a pretty mucky business. I'm not sorry. By God, I'm not. I feel better tonight than i felt for years. For one whole year, anyway. Good night. Well, that seems to be all right. Phil! Phil! Phil, get a look at this. My, my. Smoke O'Connor. Corporal O'Connor to you, young man. Why, are you paid for those stripes? I am, sir. Well, what are you doing here? I thought you were an instructor at Lulworth. Number one troop, sir. Mr. Morgan's gunner, sir. Oh, lousy troop, that. Nothing like as good as number three. Do you by any chance command number three? I do. At least, of course, that's my impression. The men think they do. Perhaps I've been sent to number one troop to even things up a bit, sir. Good morning, sir, Major. Good morning, sir. I'm sure you're thinking the same as me. Yes, sir. Them was the days. Never, Never seen, seen anything, anything like, like it in all my life. life! Carry on, Corporal O'Connor. Sir! Hey, come and have a look. The Americans have arrived. What do you mean, American? America, one of your old colonies. You mislaid it, remember? Come and have a look. Don't be so infernally blase and British. Don't believe they are Americans. No? No, they haven't got snow on their boats. we've been here, sir, and all the time walking out steady. But since these Yanks, look over there, sir, the girl in the green dress, and ah, look at them all. But God, what have they got that we haven't except the devil of a lot more money? Thank you, ma'am. Joan. Joan.
Pardon me, Bob. See you, baby. Do that. Sure, I don't mind. Couple of corners there. I've never seen anything like it in all my life. Into battle. The fighting spirit of the United Nations. Today we take you into battle in the desert. Alabay. October the 23rd, 1942, the great battle begins. But by the end of the first week of November, the battle is over. Bravo is on the run and the pursuit is on. <laughs> It was you, Di Jones, who told me, see? They were saving our division for the victory march in Berlin. It's a long way from Alamein to Benghazi, boy. Monty isn't there yet. Ah, but we shall be, Wacky. We shall be. Uh, I shall ask Davy Morgan when. Sir? Sir? Shall we get embarkation leave before we embark, do you think? Perhaps you never can tell. Will it be hot in the desert, sir? Hellish, I should think. What about our victory march now, Di? We're not in the desert yet, boy. No, and you're not likely to be unless you get on with your painting. Yeah. Die Bach, a soldier, die Bach, pardon, a soldier, die Bach, a soldier, I good, I good. So quick off the clutches, the old one, mine, but not bad. Not bad at all. Thank you. I do not care to smoke. Oh, that Cromwell was a pretty tank. And she had lovely lines, too. You give lovely. me four inches of armor plate, wacky boy, and you can keep your bloody lines. That 75 was a sweet gun, too. Right? Uh, I happen to match the nappies right out of them. You got a match, Bob? No, but I got a lighter. Sometimes works. Temperamental things, aren't they, Corporal O'Connor? Thanks, Bob. You're welcome. That was our commanding officer. You don't say. He seems to be a real nice guy. Just leave her there and come on in. Darling, what a wonderful surprise. Oh, oh darling, this is David, David Moore. Oh, how, how are you? How do you do? It's a terrible beginning, I know, but I have heard so much about you. Me too. Philip's an awful boy, isn't he? But darling, why didn't you phone me or why? I might have been out. Well, I suddenly got 48 hours leave and I left to London. Is this the last? I'm oh, Philip Hamilton, quite a surprise. sir. I I'm know afraid Wilhelmine has got terrible manners, but I'm fond of Glad them. I know you. I'm Joe Benson. So are we. I'm so sorry, but it's just that I'm so excited. Well, this is uh, David Morgan. How are you, Lieutenant? And this is Johnny, Bill, and Spike. And that's the last. Well, what's happening? Is my wife running a gambling hell of a Yeah, I guess she is. You know, I never realized Rummy could be such an expensive game. Do you know I've lost four shillings already? I'm sure you must be hungry. Would you like a sandwich or something? Joe, you know your way around the kitchen. Will you help me? Sure, anything you see. Do sit down, please. I suppose you're up at the new camp on the airfield. <sighs> the lucky guys, the rest are on the canvas. Oh, Mrs. Hamilton is swell to us. Twice a week, about 20 of us come in for a hot bath. Oh, I'm very glad. She's swell, all right. All this confirms what I've heard. Well, we must go and help her. You'll excuse us, won't you? Yeah, sure. Come on, John. Excuse me, please. Right. Uh, you better let me do that. You'll only hurt yourself. You know, I did once take part in a raid over Tokyo. The way you handle a can opener, it's a wonder any of you got back alive. 
Nearly ready, darling. I get scared just looking at that thing. Give me Tokyo any day. There. Now, two knives from the drawer, oh, please, here. David. And a tray. Oh, thank you, Joe. I must say, domestically, you Americans show up this Englishman of mine, even though it is his home. He keeps remembering it's his castle. <laughs> the lieutenant here is doing all right anyway. That's what I told you. He's American. You don't say. Where are you from? New York, sir. Well, to look at you, I guess I'd take you for an Englishman any day. Yeah, I guess I would. Work that one out, David. I'm trying to. When an Englishman says that, it's an insult because he usually says it with such an air of condescension. But when an American says it, sir... It's a compliment, son. Take it from me, it's a compliment. You ought to know. After all, you're a general. You'll still be here, Mr. Morgan, won't you? I when hope get so, back. yes. Goodbye. Perhaps you'll have time to get me some more beetles. I'm sure I shall. Now, hop it, you two. You'll be late for the match. Off you go. Bye. Goodbye, Goodbye. Nicholas. Goodbye, Goodbye, Jeremy. Sweet kids they are. My contribution. Heredity. Brute. That was a good bag of scoff, was it not, look you? It was indeed a goodness, Diver. I thank you, sir, for leave to speak, but is die the same as David? Aye, it is. Thank you, Wayne. You certainly have picked up a lot. Oh, we soldiers' wives, you know. Why are you soldiers, you two? Haven't you anything better to do? Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. Your last day, too. I can't help it. Why are women such stupid, emotional creatures? So sorry. You cry as much as you like. You should see Phil and me. Our eyes are often red with weeping. Or red with something, anyway. <laughs> Fool. Let's walk in the garden. The glorious first of June. Nobly, nobly, Cape St. Vincent. Something, something died away. <laughs> no, but what will it be like? The invasion, I mean. Oh, my dear. The noise and the people. <laughs> Funny. You see, a woman has no idea what it's like. I suppose all over England and America, too, there are women like me who paint the blackest possible pictures for themselves. Oh, don't you worry. They let the proper soldiers go first. Yes. By the time we get there, there'll probably be bathing machines on the beach and donkey rides, and they'll have concerts on the pier. <laughs> Clown. Talking Come like that makes me want to swim. It's hot. But where? Try swimming the channel. Well, there's a witch's pool, of course. Top end of the wood, it's a secret place of ours. But it's haunted. Nobody goes near it, anyway. Then I shall. God bless you, my children. God bless. Bye-bye. Oh, Philip. Yeah? I'm sorry. What on earth for? Making such a fool of myself. Oh, darling. You just keep on doing it. Just that. Oh, gosh, I... Go away! Go away! I'm terribly sorry. I didn't know this was your pool. It isn't, but to go away all the same. I, I want to get out. Am I in any way stopping you? Yes. Oh. Are you the same as me? Yes. You know, you really shouldn't. Why did you, then? I had no alternative. I had no bathing suit, and I felt hot. What do you think you're doing? Swimming? I'm cold. Try swimming, but please keep to your end of the pool. Do you think I should do otherwise? I don't know, but one can't be too careful these days. Are you going to get out? I will if you'll spend the rest of the day with me. No. Till nine o'clock, anyway. No! Hit him. If I asked you sweetly, would you promise to turn your back on me for the space of, say, 30 seconds? Please? Please. Please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Are you out yet? Nearly ready. Ten, eleven, twelve, and twelve makes twenty-four. Oh, by the way, are you a witch? No, but I was a girl guide. Why? Uh, this is the witch's pool, of course. Twenty-seven, eight, nine, thirty. Don't cheat. Twenty-four, twenty-five. Six, seven, eight, nine, thirty. 31, 32, 33. I'm decent now. Are you sure? Yes, thank you. Why nine o'clock is a matter of interest? I don't want to intrude on my hosts, and I'm bored with nothing to do. That's the most enthusiastic invitation I've ever had. Doctor? No, I'm only in the Red Cross. Oh. You're a publisher, you said. A junior partner. We've a tie-up with a firm here in London as well. 
What are you doing here in England now? I've come over for... for the invasion. Are you going to bring out a book about it? Yes, now that you suggest it. Are you a pacifist? Most sensible people are. My brother was killed last Christmas. Trying to bomb the Turpins. I'm sorry. Age 19. Very young. That must make it even worse for you. It does, as far as pacifism is concerned. But one can still be polite about it. I beg your pardon. I think you should, though you obviously don't mean to. Well, we managed to play out time. Thank you very much for your kindness. I said only until nine o'clock. Good night. Oh, I can find my way out alone, all right. Mr. Morgan? Mr. Morgan? Yes? I wish to apologize. You were at least a guest in our house. That is the most insincere apology I've ever heard, and I've heard some apologies. Yes, I really am sorry. But you're to blame as well. I don't know what it is. I've only known you a few hours, and here we go fighting just as if... <laughs> as if we'd been married for 40 years. <laughs> well, if you promise not to pick a brawl with me again, you'll come back and have a drink. I'd like to, but I've got to be back at Philip Hamilton's at 9.30. You can phone him up. No, they're sending a car from our battalion for us. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to say it that way. It sounds like I'm trying to score a cheap point. I'm glad I apologized before I found out. I'm glad you did. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, tell me one last thing. Of course. How did you get that long white scar in the middle of your back? A motor accident, but... Uh... People of Western Europe. A landing was made this morning on the coast of France by troops of the Allied Expeditionary Force. This landing is part of the concerted United Nations plan for the liberation of Europe. I have this message for all of you. Although the initial assault may not have been made... Come there, come there, come there, come there! That divisional sign's bad, Sergeant Major, bad. Let them do it again. Sir! Follow Connor. Sir! That divisional sign isn't put right immediately. You're unable to put in the boat. Sir! There's a hell of a fight going on over there. And here's Smoke O'Connor painting divisional signs. And can you tell me why? Can you now? Bull. That's what it is, Smoke. Bull. You're dead right. I can tell you why, see. But you must not tell anybody else, because it is a military secret. Top secret, I think they call it. But there's to be a big inspection in a few days' time by a very important man. Even the officers have not been told. Well, how do you know about it? Aye. Well, I was told it last night by a girl at the dance. Wishy. If the weather holds, we're off tomorrow. Thank heaven. Uh, I'll go bolo if we stop here another day. We've been here a week already. Look, Smoke, how many times I told you that we're not going All right, all right, we know. Twist. It's the mail that's worrying me. No letters we've had for many days now. Was this the girl who gave me such good information at the dance, Wacky? Oh, I was thinking about my wife. Oh, your wife? Ah, uh, it's a funny thing, isn't it? That it's wives and not girls at dances that matter at a time like this. But then, I'm not married. I can't understand how it affects morale, though. I get a few letters each week. Keeps me happy. Snap! Here comes Himmenberg. Hello, Bozzi. Just got back from Buker. No move for 48 hours at least. Men at arms had permission to walk out. Still the weather? Mm-hmm. 
Last convoy's been lying offshore for two days without being able to land a cell. Poor devils. But is the battle going well? Apparently, but Monty wants more infantry, so we've gone down two on the loading priority. Oh, Lord. Well, she will you be all right if David and I run over to my place? It's only seven miles. How do you get there? Now, don't ask questions like that. All right, but if you get caught, you stop the rocket yourself. But leave a telephone number. We're here for 48 hours anyway, probably a month. My wife would have to live in Yorkshire. Ah, oh, well, I better go and take some money off his lordship. He's been giving trouble again. Care to make a call, Chris? Might as well. Goodbye, Bushy. Come on, we might as well make a start, too. I don't want to, thanks, all the same. Don't be silly, of course you're coming. Look, Phil, you're awfully kind, but there are times when I get bored being little orphan Annie trailing around after you. Oh, stop being so tactful, for heaven's sake. It does occur to me that Wilhelmina might want to be alone with you. Heaven knows why, I must admit. Besides, I want to finish war in peace. All right. I've got a good book, too. Never seen anything like, like it in all my life. life. Getting better. I think you're both deserted. <laughs> no, we're just battle-weary. And disillusioned, don't forget that. And here have I been imagining the most terrible things happening to you both. Getting yourselves blown up on the beaches. Being shot at by that woman sniper. Your tank simply riddled with machine gun bullets. You're... Really, darling? Bullets penetrating four inches of armor plating. Come to think of it, you know, perhaps she is right. We never tested them. And all this time you've been eating your heads off in a jolly Boy Scouts camp a stone's throw from here. Concentration camp. I can't believe it. But how did you get out? I'm a trustee, and they let me out to see you. Dear David, you do still love me, don't you? Mm -hmm. Nonsense. He's been deceiving you with another. Is this true? Oh, yes. But I have been faithful to the Sinatra after my fashion. <laughs> <laughs> You're still the only married woman in my life. Bless you, my children, bless you. As the Duke of Wellington, one who was allegedly greater than me, once said, this damn tact will be the death of me. Goodbye. Hi! Hi! Good heaven! Queen Witch, how are you? Witch! Very witch! Just like when I first saw you, only you didn't have those pretty pants on. I'm quite aware that women don't look well in trousers. That is the most drastic understatement I've ever heard. Well, look, maybe I'd better not get in if you Oh, come on, come on, get in. As a matter of fact, if you must know, I was on my way to see you this very instant. Mr. Morgan, you're what I call a really awful liar. That away. David. Yes? When did you join the army? 1940. Before? Mm, before Pearl Harbor. Sure. Why did you? As a matter of fact, it was the thought of loot and booty and glory, in that order. I'm terribly persistent. Why? I haven't the vaguest idea. But it wasn't to make the world safe for democracy, anyway. See if the toast's ready, will you? Not that any of Daddy's gadgets ever do work, of course. No, it doesn't even toast it, let alone turn it over. We'll give it a bang. <laughs> no, be careful. I'm sure it's going to explode one of these days. I have it. The switch wasn't on. I'd leave it alone if I were you. No, I'm very fond of toast. <laughs> yeah. Very fond of toast. Oh, that maddening radio. Why is it that whenever you get a good program, it's always just coming to an end? That was Vaughn. Leave that station, it's nice. But I want to get a concert or something. Oh, in America, of course, this would be grounds for divorce. Mental cruelty. Mm, would it now? Move over. Darling, mm -hmm. you're not worried about anything. No, I suppose not. It won't be the same without you, of course, but we'll manage somehow till you get back. You see, the thing I hate so much is the idea of not being here if anything happened to you or the children. That sounds awfully silly, but I don't suppose there's anything I could do if I were here. But somehow, we've always been a family. You always say something so sweet and touching. It makes me want to cry. We're supposed to be worrying about you. Oh, I'll be all right. And it can't last much longer, can it? When it is finished, we'll be wonderfully, wonderfully happy all over again. As long as you still love me just a little. <laughs> Darling, you're so beautiful. <laughs> I'm 31. I shall love you more and more every day, and every day after more and more, till you're 60. And then? <laughs> By then people will begin to talk. Then I shall leave you. Divorce me? Mm-hmm, certainly. Why? So that I can marry you again. How long did it last? Two years. 
Happy ones? Tolerably. Of course, I was pretty well off at the time. It's rather an unkind remark, to put it mildly. It was rather an unkind sensation, being left by a wife. What was she like? Something like you. Same shape of face. Her voice was like yours, too. Was it? Yes, but she was far more beautiful. I do ask too many questions, don't I? Yes, it's a characteristic of your sex. Am I annoying you? Mm -hmm. That is your intention, isn't it? Yes, and I'm sorry. I really am sorry. Look, I, I want you to know I'm not always like this. It's, it's a sort of defense, I suppose. Against what? Well, against me, really. So I won't make a fool of myself, either with a woman, which I've already done once, or in this invasion business, which I'm going to do soon. And I don't know what it is I'm most scared of. I suppose I'm a perfect setup for our army trick cyclists in my present frame of mind. How terribly nice you can be when you're not trying. Maybe I no longer mistrust you like all other women. Mm. That's a backhander, no mistake. Unintentional this time. Tell me, do you believe in coincidence? And in fate. Why? The candles are going out. Jane. Jane. Yes? What was all that about? Coincidence and fate. I was due to go back today. The phone rang another 24 hours off. I went out and ran into you. That's all. Someone had to say it. It might as well be me. Jane, you wouldn't be in love with me, would you? Mm. Stupid of me, I know. No, this is just a case of one's emotions getting confused because I'm off to the wars and because women will keep heroic, romantic pictures of people which have nothing to do with the truth and can only... No, don't. I know what it is, but don't move. Because this minute will never happen again for us two. Stupid thought, I know, but it's true. Darling. Darling, listen. I don't want you to write to me or anything. Because I want to get everything fixed and sure in my own mind before I see you again. Before I come back. Do you mind? All right. Anything. Only please don't be too low. Hello? Oh. Philip Hamilton. Oh. It's for you. Hello, Phil. Yes. Yes. How funny. The arm is like that, isn't it? All right, goodbye. God bless you, dearest. Please take care. We are so fond of you. Don't worry. Goodbye, darling. Oh, there's this. You want to keep it on you all the time. It's Jeremy's. He wanted you to have it. The Gospel according to St. John. Thank you for it. Bye, Bambina. 
Goodbye. I had to come back safe, both of you, and all in one piece. Please take care of him, David. Oh, don't you worry. I'll look after him. Come on, Phil, we're late. See, the engines are kept running. They had enough waiting in England. They ought to know it. Where do we rendezvous? Harvey in the transit area. Fine. You'll find your way all right. The route is signed all the way to our new location. Just as well the way some people read a map. It wasn't my fault. It was one of those traffic cop diversions. First time I ever went from London to Brighton via Cambridge. Anyway, you're leading, aren't you, David? Yes, I'll follow the signs. Different from last time. Last time? Dunkirk in reverse. Calvados left. left. <clears throat> Golly, it's strong. Correctly blazed the turret off you. <clears throat> Just top up first. There's plenty left. Colonel Johnny think there's anything doing, was he? I don't know. So far we've done everything a soldier can except fight. 45 John says we're going to do an attack. He's usually pretty well informed. Nobody ever tells me anything. Papa, 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 Papa. Bushy, give me your case. I want a cigarette. What a sweet kid. There you are. Away you go. You forgot to give her this. Cobra Connor! Come on. Aye, and they do say that General Montgomery was there. And he spoke to all the commanding officers to tell them what was going to happen. Where do you hear this, Whack? At a dance? I have my sources of information, see? Oh. And why do you think we're checking the tanks again today? Bull. That's what it is, Wacky. Bull. My last week in Bayeux, they did call us the Piccadilly Boys, because we walked out in stiff caps. Proper dust up there was, too. <laughs> I coshed when they were in the vision, chaps. Costume good and proper. Oh, you mark my words, wacky boy. There's something that'll always keep us away from the battlefield. Yeah, turn it up, Taff. Turn it up. No, let him say what it is. Vested interests. See? <laughs> Padres at it again. Always the same tune, too. Comrade, that's all I know, that land of my father's. <laughs> First Battalion's got a much better choir. I think I'll apply for a transfer to take effect at once. Five. We're not very good at this, are we? How do you feel about tomorrow? Pretty windy. Same here. There's one consolation. There'll be a lot of Jerry's that feel much worse than we do. Ah, gin. Oh, well, that puts you out. Well, I think I'll crack off. I want to write to Wilhelmina before I go to bed. Reval is at 3.30? Yep. I wish that ruddy choir had piped down. You know, the trouble about the Welsh is they never stop singing, even when they're talking. Good night, Charlie. Good night.
through the woods. I'm quite sure of it. So if number one go round to the right, make a demonstration, three and four can sneak through on the left, while the rest of us give us covering fire, turret down behind the hedges on the left. Who leads on the left? Number three, and you just follow Philip to come round behind him. Right. That's all. Whose tank was it? Sergeant Thomas, German 88. Got him all except the driver. Everybody quite happy? We shall be, sir, once we start. Is this terrible hanging about? I do not like, sir. David! About time we started, David. You must push on. Just putting them in the picture, sir. They're a bit new to it. Oh, bound to be. First time in battle. Tell them there's nothing to worry about. shot that man. I hope they put him in the book for that. Yes, sir. You know now where the 88 is anyway. Thank you very much, sir. Osmond Jones! Sir! Wouldn't mind to put you in the book. What the devil do you mean walking about half naked? Naked, sir? Yes, half naked man. Top three buttons. Do them up. Sir, may we start the battle? I do not feel safe around here any longer. Aye. Hello, Megan 3. Stand by. We're going to put down smoke now. Come here. Just below my head. 
Why, another inch, boy, and... Uh, another foot, you mean. Tee up! Right. And you better not mention another word about Berlin. <laughs> Vested interest. I wonder why we're staying here. They never tell us anything. Cigarette? Anyway, it went all right. Just like an exercise. Except for that. Yeah, except for that. Cup of tea for you, sir. Thanks. Golly, it's strong. Strong enough for the spoon to stand up at it, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Pity about Sergeant Thomas. Yes, sir. He was all right, sir. Hello, who's there? No shoot you, PF, only me. Got our orders for tomorrow. Colonel Johnny's just finished his own group. Thanks. The form is we apparently run into quite a strong position. They've got 12 SS, the Hitler Jugend boys, and most of 21 Panzer. So we let the infantry come up tomorrow and we pull back. Pull back? Yes, the battalion's knocked out 17 tanks and taken all objectives. And tomorrow we pull back. The trouble is, we don't know the big picture. What's going on on the right and on the left, while we fight our own tiny little wars with a squadron of tanks. Oh, by the way, Corporal Connor. Sir? You'll be up to sergeant as soon as we get a replacement for the tank we lost this morning. Thank you, sir. Pity to get it this way, sir. Yes, bad luck about Sergeant Thomas. Look, David, as we pull out tomorrow, the party won't be able to bury them. Afraid you'll have to. Good night. Good night. Good night, sir. We'd better get some spades off the tank. We'll do it ourselves. Oh, yes. Will you ask Mr. Hamilton to lend us his New Testament or Gospel or whatever it is he carries around with him? I don't think I ought to do that, sir. You see, Sergeant Thomas was a Protestant and I'm a Catholic, sir. Don't be such a damn fool. Besides, I'm tired enough without all that nonsense. I'm sorry, sir. I'm not trying to be difficult, but... It's all right. I'll do it myself. But, you know, it is the same God. I'd uh, get the other spade, sir. been out of the battle a couple of hours and they're at it again. Just like Capron. Well, I suppose there's something in it. At least they teach you to die with your boots clean.
inside, sir. Come on. Get another extinguisher, quick. Hurry. you guys asleep. We thought something might have happened to you, sir. Well, it hasn't, and in future, don't wait up or I'll put you all in the books, see? <sighs> now, good night. Good night, sir. No, star. Casco star. Never seen anything like it in all my life. As long as we and the Canadians keep pushing away on the Falaise front, the Jerrys have got to keep their armor in that area. And as long as they do that, the less there is for the Americans in their push away on our far right. I think Patton's got to shot by now, somewhere off the map here. Pretty good going. Any questions? Why, yes, sir, please, sir. Why is it that the Russians and the Americans do advance hundreds of miles? And we do always seem to stop after ten. Aye, sir. Your memories are pretty short. The greatest advance by any army so far was from Alamein to Tripoli. Lord knows how many hundreds of miles. And if you look at this front we're on now, with about half as many divisions as the Americans, we and the Canadians are holding down just as many Germans opposite us as they are. So don't ask damn silly questions. Anyone else? Right, that's all. Hark at old land of hope and glory. Giving him stick, weren't you? Thank heavens, members of the House of Lords will be first in the tumbrel when the revolution comes. As a matter of fact, Bushy, you're too modest. We have 15 out of 28 divisions on our front. Look, don't start him off again. I'm going straight away to put in a year's subscription to the Daily Worker. You can borrow my copy. Over the way, Bushy, are you using your jeep? We thought we might run over to Div headquarters and find out the form. So long as you're back by half past 12, Claw and I are going over to Coal Street. Thanks. For a fully licensed lunch. We will. Darn good, you know. It's more than half. What is? Fifteen out of twenty-eight. Would you like some biscuits? That's very kind. Hmm. Hmm? What's the matter now, you old fool? Imposter. Well, so that's the fault. Yes, Leclerc got into Paris yesterday. And now there's a flap going on because we've got to move the tanks 150 miles by transporter before tomorrow night. Well, we'd better get out of your way then, hadn't we? Well, sir. No, wait till George gets back. He'd like to see you, and church plays already started, and last half an hour. What do you think? Yes, let's. Thanks a lot, Gerald. All right, bye, Gerald. Hello, I am here. For there the shield of the mighty is vilely cast away, the shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, the, saw, the sword of Saul returned not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. I hadn't the vaguest idea it was Sunday, had you? No. What month is it? August, I think. Or is it September? Does it matter? Wilhelmina never ever thinks of putting a date on her letter by any chance. Bless her heart, she's dead right. Unimportant. Wonder where we're going. Does it make any difference? No. As long as it isn't Burma. <laughs>
Africa. Strong opposition. We can't go round it as there's nothing but trees. Will you ask the boys in blue to be a bit more Wilco about it? Hello? Control calling red leader. Keep perfectly still. I'll get the medical half check up and we'll have you out in no time. Get the medical officer up, will you? Yeah, have a speak of this while you're waiting. It is Commander Chief's intention, Army Commanders. Corps commanders and our own divisional commander's intention, and it is also my intention, that we shall be in Brussels tonight. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, it's 157 kilometers. <laughs> Hello, Charlie. Coming up to Belgian Frontier now. Over. Hello, Charlie. Mind have your passport ready. Over. Charlie, going to customs now. Out. Push on then, they're ahead of us by about half an hour. The other set of line already. You want to go sit? Not bloody no. like that. Come on! Mademoiselle, who 
est la gare du Nord? Vous n'êtes pas Bosch? You are not German, hein? Of course not. Les Anglais, les Alliés, anyway. Pas les Bosch, les Anglais? Oui. Oh, ils sont arrivés! Bravo, bravo! Les Vive les Anglais! Vive les Anglais! Hey, hey, look, look, you're on my side. Look, you help us find the guy. Guide? Agui! Agui! Oui, oui, ça fait long. Tank, tank, tank. Hello, Baker One. Opposition too strong for me. Completely overwhelmed. Hello, Baker One. Same here. Situation's rapidly deteriorating. Still, I got three good telephone numbers already. Merci. Bravo. Dieu des Anglais, comme ils sont blasés. Wake up, Tommy. Monsieur, monsieur, c'est le guide, le guide, le guide. Le guide, all right. All right, driver is back. Hello, Baker One. Hello, Baker One. Number one, Scott and Will advance. Number one, Scott and Will. Merci. Over. Oh, monsieur, yes. Um, we were wondering if you could um, take a check. Of course, mon colonel. Delight. But to now, they are guests. You never even asked for money from the English this morning. Of course. Tonight, you are the guests. Oh, monsieur, you embarrass me. I don't touch you. Who's been sleeping on my pillow? What do you mean early? Never got to bed, wondering what had happened to certain grenadiers who were supposed to be at the Gare du Nord. We were there all the time. We were first in the town as well. You must have come in by train then, for you certainly weren't on the road. Where are you off to now, for the weekend? Apparently we're moving on. As far as this place is concerned, we've had it. Stand beside the pits of worst guards and make way for the soldiers. Go back to the gate. Charles Heisey. Verve Pleco. Since 1941. Ah, yes. We wondered if you could possibly sell us a few bottles. Only a few, of but, course. But, monsieur, they are not mine to sell. Oh, oh, I was afraid of that. Mais sûrement, monsieur. All these belongs to the Germans, but I'm sure they wouldn't mind. Not now. As long as you don't take too many. Only a dozen bottles or so, that's all we want. A dozen? Well, half a dozen. But, monsieur, you can take half a million if you like. Over there. Push it. Hello. Wonderful news. We've discovered a champagne point. I've got news too. We're moving in an hour, so get cracking round up the rest of your troop. Don't you know there's a war on? Champagne at a time like this. How much have they got? Well, goodbye, Hindenburg. Do everything this gentleman says. Bye, dear. Is everything on board? <laughs> What's this? Uh, it is an extra case, sir, for the sergeant's mess. All right, you black rogue. We've allotted you a whole three tonner already. Put it in. Right. Start up. That one, uh, put well, name. goodbye. Thank you very much for all your kindness. Don't mention it. Bye bye. Bye bye, Hindenburg. Be a good girl. <laughs> take the bridge. The Americans have dropped another at Nijmegen to take the bridge and again at Grave to take that bridge so that we can get a straight run through up the road to Arc. Got it? Seems easy enough on paper, Bushy. Well, that's it. There's a long road ahead. Check out the tanks and get cracking. Sir, I've heard a rumor, sir, that if this is successful, the war will be over by Christmas at the very latest. Christmas. Well, if the American and British paratroopers take the bridges, and if we join up with them, and if the rest of the army follows up, perhaps you never can tell. Holy Floyd, I'm sure it's them! The Yanks! The Yanks, sir! They're dropping! It must be the first bridge! Hey, it is them! Hey, fellas, come on! The British are here! Hey, gang, the line is amazing! Come on! 
Woods in 77 Jones. Sir. Better you as well. Oh, thanks. Give these to the others, will you? And keep your head down. Thank you, sir. What's the form, do you know? The Knicks have gone and lost nearly all their tanks. We can't get through off the roads. On the roads, it's just like giving them target practice. Not what you call tank country. What about the airborne boys? You can't leave them. We've lost most of our armor just getting up here. No, there's a division going to bash down the road tonight. Infantry? Yes, it's not so funny, though. We may have advanced a hell of a long way, but our front's only as wide as one main road. They've cut it. Three times a day, and we're 40 miles from the main arm. Here comes one. Anybody hurt? Everything all right, sir. Bit wet, Very sir. rude of them, I must say. <laughs> what is it? A letter from the state. I've been called up. <laughs> Drafted. Half time, boys. Yes, 
should ever fight at night. Not with you real coaches around, Tom. Good night, mister. Good night, laddie. Good luck. Discipline is not high in that battalion, sir. Oh, they do all right. Yes, the queen of battles. Beg pardon, sir? Nothing, I said nothing. See, you made it at last, sir. What on earth goes on round here? The Americans moved in, sir. They're sharing our billets. You can't turn your back a minute without something happening. Tank crews with cigars. What next? I'd like to get him back on the square at Catron. If the Sar Major could see him now. Call. Call. Really cushy place, this, sir. You'll like it. Say, Major, tell me something. Are you addressing me? Is it true 48 hours leave is on? Yes, we can go as far as Brussels if we want. Philip and David get it first. You and I go about last. Fair enough. Friendship's a very beautiful thing. You should try it, Sander. Like those two fellows, Damon and... Um... Runyon? Hmm. There's a bottle place conveniently near your hand, Michael. Launch it, will you? <laughs> Talking of secret weapons, suppose you know there's an Insta concert tonight. The first name out of the hat, the first to go on leave. Sound democratic principle. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. I can't push it. No oh, Bushy, come work. on, do hurry up. David and I want to go and pack. Gentlemen, it is with profound embarrassment that I announce. It's a fiddle. That's two bottles of Chanel and one of Gala, all right? Yes, I remember. We just want some lace sticks. Is that right? Check. Be good while I'm away. Bye, have a good time. Say, let's go by the quartermaster and see about those shirts. You can get them be all right. Sure, he's a swell fella. Thanks, Texas. Sunday the 26th at 6.30. That's right, Padre. And we expect you to stay to dinner after. They're giving a kind of farewell party to your boys. Thanks, Captain. I'll be glad to. How long the sermon? Oh, about ten minutes or less. Okay, I'll last. Goodbye, Captain. Phil! Phil, Battalion 1 should go up and see them right away. Oh, what's the matter? Bushy, he's been killed. But... Shell no accident. Accident? Oh, it doesn't make any sense, does it? Almost comic. To get as far as this and then... And Claude? He's all right, a bit beat up. Say, anything I can do? Apparently not, Tex. Thanks all the same. Sir? Yes? Thank you, sir, for leave to speak, sir. What is it? 4-5 Jones, sir. He's been spreading rumors, so I had to put him under close arrest. Oh, what rumors? About Major Noble, sir. Well, you better let him out again. David, I'd better go up to battalion headquarters. Then I'm going to try and find the hospital where Claude is. Shall I come? No, I think you'd better stay here. See you later. So it is true, sir. Yes, ran into an armored car. Better check that pressure, Guardsman Reese. Looks a bit flat. After he'd come all this way, too. Ah, uh, he was a gentleman, sir. And a fine officer. Yes. It's a funny thing, isn't it, sir? One minute you're alive and the next you're dead. And there's nothing in between. Nothing we can do about it either. And never a one of us thinks it's going to happen to him, sir. Yes, I know what you'd say if you were told at the end of the next battle we'd have only one tank left. Yes, sir. I'd be terribly alone without the others. And so the world is left but with one hope, if it isn't to destroy <coughs> itself completely in the next generation. I told you before, there can be no class in the sight of God. Neither can there be nations. You men here today have perhaps noticed this one very strange truth, that the person sitting beside you may be wearing a different uniform of another country, but you find that you get along better with him than you do, say, with some of your fellow Americans, your fellow Englishmen. Now, if we believe that all that matters is a way of life, and that all people from any nation can share in it, it must be a way of life that is right. Right and true and honorable and just and full of love for the rest of humanity. We live in an age of great cynicism and even greater materialism, but there is something in man that no man could ever destroy, the spirit, that which raises him above the animal. I know that at times you live the existence of an animal, 
You burrow under the ground and you kill, but you have a spirit. This much I leave with you. It may comfort you in the times of war, and I pray you may remember it in the days of peace. Each one of you has a body, but he is a soul. Now, how about you, Bobby? What do you want? Nothing, thank you. Sure? Quite sure. Oh, hello. Come on in. Excuse me. Say, Phil, I hope you don't mind. I brought back Mary Simon with me, Carol Tribune. That's much the best thing you've done so far. How'd you do? I feel very guilty about gate crashing, but I'm mighty hungry. And she is my cousin. But you don't have to apologize. We're delighted to see you. Oh, we love war correspondents. Golly, a white woman. Oh, Miss Simon, this is Lord Bentham. Not to be confused with Lord Nelson. And here's with the other eye. Look, you don't want to meet anyone else. They're not very nice. And I'm sure you're crazy about champagne. I am. The fourth was torn to pieces by a mob. In a friendly way, of course. The fifth, we're not very proud of him. He died in bed. The husband shot him. You must come again tomorrow. He won't be here then. A deserter? As a matter of fact, he's being sent home to lecture in factories. Encourage production, recruiting for the army. <laughs> Some advertisement for the army, I must say. Boston? New York. Like to tell me more? There's no story in it. All right, forget it then. Is there one here at all? This room? Enough for every article you ever write. Yes. The nearer to the battle, the better we get on. The further away from the front, it's how slow can the British advance? How fast can the Americans run? In both directions. There's a moral in it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because only the few get near the battle. And a hell of a lot of them won't be alive when they're wanted after the war. And what they've learned here will have died with them. They like you here, don't they? Well, I like them. Perhaps that's why. They don't tell me what's wrong with America, and I don't tell them what's wrong with them. A lot of sermons tonight. It's Sunday. I'm not sorry. I've wanted to say that for a long time. You talk for a change. What with me and that old Earl of ours. I'm all yours. I will not contradict you. Tell us about the rest of the family. The present Earl, perhaps. Good. I love talking about myself. Where were you wounded, then? Uh, what? Where were you wounded? <laughs> Fool. In which country? Here, see if you can find room for these. Just manage, I expect. Haven't the Americans got an airfield somewhere near here? Uh -huh. How about trying to catch a lift off them? Save time. We've only got 48 hours. Think they're going our way to Brussels? Everything goes to Brussels. Everything sensible. Brussels? No. You might get a ship later, but these are for Northolt. Northolt? How about it? It's a bit of a risk. Do you think it's worth trying? Sure. No, well, I'm sorry, boys. It can't be done. One of our boys got busted last week for the same thing. Well, it's worth trying anyway. All right, fellas. Come on. Let's go. Second. Hey, hurry up. I think we got a lift to London. Okay. Please, will you come and be married? Darling. Oh, darling. Darling. Yes, we were certainly much luckier than that. But well, at least David didn't have to get dressed up like a Christmas tree and have his photograph taken with a lot of giggling women. Nonsense, you loved it. And you never stopped ogling the bridesmaids all through the ceremony. That's what I mean, St. Moritz. At least I did have you to myself for a whole month. It's the most expensive month I've ever spent, thank you. No, David's a lucky chap. No, that, that was a funny one. Do you remember Nicholas's <laughs> christening? I thought the dean was going to drop it. Silly old toff nearly did. <laughs> you know, you were getting quite fat in those days. At least the war's done you some good. Your midriff. But it hasn't really changed you, has it? Inside, I mean. I wouldn't really know. You get such an odd sort of superficial slant on the war, being an armored division. You're always moving over places and people. And they're the ones that really see and feel the war, the people who were fought over. Go on. <laughs> Perhaps in the infantry it's different. Maybe their feelings are more profound about it all. They have a worse time than we do. But then you see, the things that you remember are all the wonderful, funny things that happen. 
Not any of the horrors and unhappy things at all. I suppose that's how wars occur, over and over again. Because of what you don't remember. <laughs> Silly, isn't it? We're going to be very happy again soon, aren't we? When it's all over. Yes, we'll be very, very happy again one fine day. Oh, darling, we've been so lucky when you think of it. I only hope they'll be as lucky too. Who, David and Jane? Mm -hmm. Nobody will ever be as lucky as we are. Nobody? Nobody could be. Yes, but we'll have a real honeymoon someday. It'll be all over by Christmas, won't it? I hope so. I still can't believe it. It's really all so sudden, Mr. Morgan. Oh, we Americans. I suppose I'm an American subject, no? American citizen, anyway. Darling, tell me something I wanted to know. We British and Americans, do we think the same way? No. No? But we think the same things, much more important. Tell me, darling, has it been? The war, I mean? Was it as bad as you thought? Well, I'm not as scared as I thought I'd be. I suppose you can get used to anything in time. At times, we were probably much safer than you people here in London. But, darling, you will take care of yourself, won't you? Here we are talking about the war, when there's so much else to talk about. We'd better get back to the hotel. It's nearly two. What time's Philip coming for you? Midday. Are you sure Wilhelmina we'll fixed a ride back for us? An American general's private plane. Good enough. Mrs. Morgan? Yes, Mr. Morgan. In future, I want you to stay away from these Americans. See? seem to have the whole thing in hand, but they may want us to put in a counter-attack, though I don't think it's likely. Well, I'll go and make a recce anyway, sir. Just take a look at the ground, covered approaches and forming up places, you know the sort of thing. Right, sir. Oh, and Philip, explain to the men about Christmas dinners. Get them up as soon as the flap's over. Yes, I quite forgot it was Christmas. Happy Christmas, sir. Same to you, though I don't think it's likely. I really wouldn't come if I were you, honestly. Oh, all the other tank commanders have been up. Besides, I have to sometime company for you anyway. Yes, you like. What are you looking so pleased about? This. Janie's going to have a baby. And I'm to be godfather, sir. Yeah. And what are you going to call him? Oh, Wilhelmina. This is as far as we take the vehicles, Major. Nothing much, but they get armored cars and tanks patrolling up in those woods. Where are your forward cutters? Just over that ridge. Yeah. They only move at night. Can you get up there all right? Yeah, sure, I guess so. I wasn't up there earlier today, but some of the others were. Well, we might as well go. I'll show you the way. It's one of ours. Nice to see them about again. Yes, that last few days. First time we had to worry about them. They should be up in the woods, according to this map reference. Yeah, good cover anyway. It's more than you could say for us. You see anything? An odd crowd here and there. Could be an SP gun as well. Oh, well, that should wrap it up. You quite happy? Sure. You know, Bastogne should be somewhere up there to the right. Is that where 101 are? Yes. I'd like to see Tex and the other boys again. I'll have a look. Oh, we'd have to drive around there one fine day. Come on, it's going to snow harder. On our way, China. trying to bring the scout car up for you. Tell him. Tell him not to. Hell, I haven't got a field dressing. Where's yours? I haven't got one either. 
Put him in the books, our Major. <coughs> Gently, Davy. That madman will be here in a minute. I wish to God you'd go. I'll be all right up here till dark. You may think you command this squadron, but you but don't. You don't. <laughs> Can't understand why they've stopped shelling. No more ammo. Perhaps it's that plane. Phil. Yes? If anything happens to me, you can take my leave vacancy next week. England. Don't be silly. You go yourself. Besides, the weather's better in May. Here, put this over you. Can't make out why they've stopped shelling. Smoke's nearly here. He won't be a minute. If he makes it, put him under close arrest. <laughs> Does it hurt to have a lot? No. No. No leg. No feet. Nothing. Phil, don't talk. You always talk too much. She was right. She said it would be all over by Christmas. Oh, Jane, you mean? You'll see her. And Wilhelmina. You're lucky, you and Wilhelmina. Shh, don't do it. He's practically here. Don't forget. Smoke's to be the godfather. Quiet, David. Only a minute. He's just coming. Don't forget what I said. Forget what? Wilhelmina. You're lucky, you and Wilhelmina. This as well. Have you known him long? Four years. It's a long time. Four years. I wish I could have given them a cross or something. I'll do that tomorrow. I think they'd mind if I get it wrong. No. You go right ahead. I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> 